everyone, welcome back to another video. Around three months ago, a level was released by Pinecones by the name of Balls Mountain, one of GD's greatest creations to exist. And today I decided to review the whole Balls Mountain series. Balls Mountain, Fard Mountain, Milker's Mountain, Nest Summit, and Valley and Volcano. Without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> The level starts off with you exiting a forest. The backgrounds are really good, but these nuggets aren't cutting it. For some reason, I really like the block design, but at the same time, I hate it. It's simple yet effective, but it's super damn messy. And holy cow, is that a Minecraft nether portal? It appears that in Balls Mountain is another Minecraft cube story level. Bonus points for that. I also really like these mountains because of how foggy they feel. We also get to see these awful lumps of garbage they call rainbow blocks. A bit later we see some lava and damn this lava is hot. Not as hot as me of course. The next part we enter is some cave part which is pretty simple yet effective but not messy. Not much to say about this part really, along with the build up. The drop is pretty cool not gonna lie and for the people who say ew it looks ugly. I say that's your opinion, everyone has their own opinion. And no one's opinion is right or wrong. Except yours of course cause you're fucking opinions. I honestly do like this drop though cause it simulates insanity. Or it's simulating how many damn balls mountain sequels are getting released and driving me insane to review them all. However, the drop is pretty short and lasts around 10 seconds. After that, I don't have much to say cause the ending is full circle, except the fact that why is it so easy to die at this double spike? As our second level, we have Fard Mountain by Eddie Smith. I don't really have much to say about this first part, besides the fact that the scale hack glow is a bit too noticeable. But that's just a small nitpick, and I don't really mind. The part after, however, is just amazing. You can't tell me that this part looks bad, mainly because I'll lock you in my basement. Everything about this background is spot on, and the satisfying gameplay definitely doesn't hurt the part. Except for this green dash orb that kills you if you're a second too late. But we don't talk about the green dash orb here. Next part is insanely good as well, like yeah, John Chess TDs are cool, but have you seen this part? Also, the entire part is incredibly easy, because all you do is jump late. The next part is called the Fard Pit. <sighs> what am I doing with my life at this point, honestly? Not much to say here, really, because the part is decent, but damn those clips and monsters are looking kinda hot, not gonna lie. But one complaint I have with this part is these falling spikes are a bit annoying, but again, that's just a small nitpick. Before I start talking about the deco in this part, I just want to say the gameplay is unsight readable without practice in this part, but it's satisfying to pull off when you'll learn it. Anyways, this part looks really similar to the first part, just with a different background. However, the background makes up for the reused block designs. Then we get a boss fight with Benny Boy 35 What is going on at this point? Why am I reviewing the Balls Mountain series? I guess the boss is pretty cool. There, I have reviewed the whole Balls Mountain series, I sure hope. As our third level, we have Milker's Mountain by Haugs. Honestly, did not know this level existed until I replayed Balls Mountain and saw that Milker's Mountain existed. Yay, time to review another work of art. The thing I like about the star is how it's linked to Balls Mountain by showing it in the distance. But yeah, the beginning looks exactly like Balls Mountain. As our second section, we see a dark cave, which will be a common occurrence in these levels. Don't ask me why I like this part, there's absolutely no reason for me to like it. And wow, we get to see these awful lumps called rainbow blocks we saw on Ball's Mountain. Luckily, it doesn't last long. The next part, we enter a nice themed part, and this part has a fair share of problems. Like the fact that these waterfalls just look bad, and the fact that there's lava in an ice themed part. Why? I know it's a GD level, but still. My next complaint is the fact that the whole part is awfully empty, almost having no air deco. I don't really have much to say about the next part, so let's move on. The next part is easily the best part of all the Balls Mountain levels. Not because of the gameplay, not because of the deco, no no no. It's because of this amazing masterpiece. The next part is pretty eh, with the colors being pretty bad and the gameplay being pretty weak. But my drowned trash girlfriend is here, which brings up the part to a 10 out of 10. And about the last part. We, we, we don't talk about it. There, I reviewed the whole Balls Mountain trilogy, I sure. The thing I like about this part is how it kind of stands out from all the Balls Mountain levels. However, the block does not have an ooh in it, so I'm bringing down the part to a negative 2 out of 10. 
However, we get to see my GMD girlfriend, so that automatically brings up the part to an 11 out of 10. Don't worry, Dr. Carl, I feel the exact same weight too. The next part is some cave part, and guess what? There's actual decoration in this part. This is a first, but yeah, not much to say about this part, really. The next part is a boss, and gets an award for being the second worst part of Not Summit, gameplay-wise. Mainly because of the annoying boss attacks. Also, this part is pretty empty, but it doesn't ruin the part as much as the gameplay does. However, the last part is easily the worst part, mainly because it's filled to the brim with blind jumps, and the decoration is just the first part, but done worse. And there's an uwu in the block design, bringing the part to a negative 4 out of 10. And yeah, the level's already over. Huge props for including my GMD girlfriend, but damn, those two uwus ruined the level. Finally, I've covered the whole Balls Mountain quadrilogy. Apparently, there's a fifth level, and no, I won't cover any more levels, because I can't find any more, and my IQ has already dropped to sub-50 degrees Celsius. Anyways, the first part looks exactly like Balls Mountain, so there isn't really much to say here. However, the next part is much more interesting. You can't tell me that this isn't a good background with a straight face. However, the block design is kind of mediocre, because it doesn't really fit. The drop has the same problems, but it's a bit better. Somehow, the gameplay is actually fun, which is kind of rare for a Balls Mountain spin-off level. And there's a troll face, so it's automatically a 10 out of 10. The next part is alright, just why is there grey grass? It makes the block design really messy, plus my two brain cells couldn't figure out that there's an orange orb here and I died three times there. The next part is probably the best part, unfortunately it's really damn laggy, and this cutscene is pretty cool not gonna lie. The next part looks exactly like the first part, but it's much better because there's more detail. The last part is pretty empty, however it works and it's actually a pretty good part, and a small detail like is how these platforms drop to the music. That concludes my 1,500 word essay on the Balls Mountain level review. Here are all the levels ranked from worst to best in my opinion. Thanks for watching.